Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. I'm the Home Cooking Hunter and this is our portioning and vacuum sealing section of the home processing series that we're doing. Uh, what I want to show you guys first on this and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to uh, cut this stuff up into portion sizes and then how to use the vacuum sealer in order to keep it for as long as possible. What we've got right here is a deconstructed rear quarter. Um, you've got the top round, your sirloin, or top sirloin, sirloin, I think I got that right. These are also just called roasts. Uh, this is your eye of round, and then this is the upper shank part of the, uh, of the rear quarter. Um, you can do a lot with these right here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut them up into steaks. Now when I pull this over, I'll explain to you a little bit of what you can do with each piece. So what I'm going to get right here is this basic this lead this sirloin piece of meat type right here and I'm just going to cut this up into ugly steaks I'm going to chop it up so I can use it for steaks other applications for this you can do jerky you can smoke them in the smoker you can even put this thing in a crock pot and slow cook it I mean you or, or in the oven so there's lots of different applications you can do and a lot of different people are going to tell you to do it a lot of different ways but I'm the home cooking hunter and I'm telling you how to do it my way so let's get started right now so what I'm going to do is to clean it up a little bit I'm going to square that out and I'm going to put this right here into my grind pile and then we're going to start making probably about five to six ounce steaks and then we'll go like that right there and see this little piece right here this little nub can go straight into our grind pile as well. And so from that right there, I've got three beautiful steaks. Take a look at this. I mean, just look how gorgeous that is. Well, I mean, you don't even need to trim any of this stuff up. You see this right here? When you put that on the grill or in the cast iron skillet on a hard sear, that's just gonna melt right away and you're gonna have a beautiful piece of meat. Next, basically the same piece of meat. It's another sirloin type piece of meat, roast, whatever. We're gonna cut that up into steaks as well. See that little guy right there? Bye. <laughs> okay, so see this little guy right here? This is the little eye around. You can do a lot of different things with this, with this right here. You can cook it as a whole. You're gonna get two per animal that you, that you harvest. Um, but what I like to do with these is pair the two of them together and I save them and I label it cut up or uh, a primo because it's a really nice piece of meat. And I'll use it for fajitas, uh, tacos, quesadillas. I'll put it into a stew meat, grilled cheese, all kinds of different things. But basically I'm using this for anything I'm gonna wanna cut up into small pieces and eat. So I'm leaving this whole as it sits. The next piece we're gonna get is this top round, this big bulbous piece of meat. You can see some silver skin still left on that, and that's okay. There's actually some silver skin groups growing through this, so we're not gonna deconstruct this or anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make steaks out of it. I'm gonna take it and square this end off right here. That'll go into my grind pile. Come over here, same thing. Square that end off. Put those into the grind pile. I am going to pull this little guy off right here. It's just a little flap of meat. I'm not really sure what it was. And then I'm going to do about half inch to three quarter inch steaks and just slice them straight down. And you can see there, you've got a beautiful little piece of steak. Now, if you were to be at a, uh, a butcher, if you were to go to a processor, this piece of meat right here combined with these other pieces of meat they would run it through a bone saw. So you'd have this giant flat steak with a little bone in it, which hence was the leg of the deer. All right, so now we've got all, all of this stuff cut up how we want it. I'm gonna get rid of this cutting board, grab the vacuum sealer, and we're gonna get started. All right, guys, so we got the vacuum sealer over here and we're ready to go. But first, I wanna point some things out. If you're gonna get into home processing where you're taking your wild animal that you harvested and you're gonna put it in the freezer all by yourself, a vacuum sealer is almost a must have. 
let's point out some things about it. One, a vacuum sealer, it helps you create portions. So you don't have to just put in the big chunk of meat in some Ziploc bags or whatnot. You can create your own portion sizes to thaw just what you want. Two, it prevents freezer burn. You can keep this meat in these bags. The longevity on this is one to two years. So think about that guys. Aside from wrapping them in paper or putting them in Ziploc bags, this bad boy pulls all that air out and so it keeps your meat fresh longer. Now, let's talk about what I have over here. This is a Weston Pro 1100 vacuum sealer. Weston specializes in home processing equipment. They make some really good stuff. Now, I wanna say this one right here is probably gonna run you about $300, but let's think about this. When you process a deer, it takes it upwards from anywhere from 60 to $100 per animal to have it processed. And that's not even with special cuts. So this guy could pay for itself literally in a season if you're killing multiple animals. Now, what you can do with this, guys, you can vacuum seal several, there are two different ways with this. You can buy these pre-sealed vacuum seal bags, which save on them time, and but they do cost a little bit extra. Or you can buy the rolls, eight inch or the 11 inch. So you wanna get, when you're buying the rolls though, you wanna get two different sizes for your different portions of meat, you know, whether big or small. Got my handy tongs right here, and I'm gonna grab one of the smaller bags, get it open, and I'm gonna throw in, whoops, let's get these, some of these steaks. Now I'm doing two steaks per bag, because that's about all me and my wife are gonna eat. You've got your heating element here, and you've got your sealed, your vacuum chamber. You wanna make sure you leave enough of that in the vacuum chamber so it can pull the air out. Pull it down, click it shut, and then all we gotta do is let it go. <laughs> okay, and I, I wanna mention this too, guys. You see how right here, I left room at the bottom and room at the top. That allows the air to flow past the, the meat so you don't have a lot of air pockets inside of it there. Now last, here's something that's real important. When you start throwing these in the freezer and they freeze up and you've got them all piled in there, you may not know what's what. So what I like to do, get a Sharpie. I like to date what the cut of meat is, whether it's a doe or a buck, and I also like to put the date on there so I know how long ago the animal was shot or put in the freezer. Um, other things you can do if you got you some kids and you know you want to label it, you know, so and the little Johnny's buck, that way he can come in there, pull up a pack of meat out and say he's going to eat the animal that he harvested. It makes things a little bit more fun. So that's it, guys. That is vacuum sealing to a T. If you make the right investments and the right equipment, you can save yourself a lot of money in the long run and you can learn a lot of good things. We'll see you on the next part of the home processing series. I'm the home cooking hunter and thanks for being with us.